ለመማር ወደ ትምህርት ተቋም መሄድ ግድ አይደለም ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ ራሳችሁን ከኮሮና ቫይረስ ወረርሽኝ የተበቃችሁ በቤታችሁ ወይም በተመቻችሁ ቦታ በኢንተርኔት አማካኝነት በኦንላይን ትምህርታችሁን መከታተል ይቻላል ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ ኢንስቲትዩት ኦፍ ኮመርሻል ማኔጅመንት አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር የሚሰጡ ትምህርቶችን ተከታተላችሁ በስድስት ወር ጊዜ በአለም አቀፍ ደረጃ ተቀባይነት ያለውን የስልጣና ማስረጃ ባለቤት መሆን ይቻላል ከኢትዮጵያ ሲቪል አቪሽን ባለስልጣን ሙሉቅና ባገኝ የነባቸው የፍላይት ኦፕሬሽን እና የሆስተስ ስልጣናም በመዝገባ ላይ ነን ጥያቄና መልስ የክፍል ስራዎች ብሎ ፈተና መፈተን ክፍል ውስጥ እንዳላችሁ አይነት ልምድ ባላችሁ መምራን እየተማራችሁ በኦንላይን ባላችሁበት ቦታ አድራሻ ከ22 ማዞሪያ ወደ ሾላ ገቢያ በሚወስደው መንገድ 150 ሜትር ገባ ብሎ ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ ህልሞን እውን ያደርጋል Happy to see you guys. Some very nice faces there. The other guys, I can't see your faces because uh, I think you stopped your videos either because of connection or something. Yes, I can see Ms. Finn. Still very nice people to meet on a bright day like today. Um, uh, I want to say um, we have had a very nice um, hot day in this part of the world. and uh, today i would like us to move on and finish up on the last session of um, the the topic we were dealing with last time and uh, i suggest that we begin looking at um, what we call the market segmentation so what we'll do basically for today i would like us to discuss this a little bit and then create one class activity somewhere along the way i would like us to take a, a brief view of what um, a market is try to understand how to segment the market on what basis then at that point i would like to when we finish with that i will ask uh, that we look at what we do in our companies or in a company uh, sorry in a, yes companies in in ethiopia and see whether we can consider some aspects of uh, market segmentation as it were So uh ladies and gentlemen if you allow me um I don't know whether you guys remember what we discussed last time um in lesson number I think was it number 5 just to take a recap uh, it's important for us to always remind ourselves of a few things uh I want to I want to re I want to post that uh, lesson number 5. Uh, let's just take um, a review of what we learned the other time so that we can be on the same level. Uh, what is happening with my system? Um something has happened i hope i will be able to resolve along the way uh but anyway let's look at what we learned the other time just generally um i don't know whether you can see my screen not that one just want to remind ourselves about critical things which will inform our discussion in a short while and we did learn a, quite a lot about what a uh, consumer market we also looked at what we call consumer uh, buying behavior and just to touch base on a little a uh, little bit about some of these issues we said that a consumer market is about the customer themselves uh who buy goods or procure services for the purpose of their personal use we also said that um, we cannot classify consumer markets as um we cannot con- uh, uh, um, include businesses uh who, who buy goods and services as a category under consumer market because eventually they do not consume the product generally that's what we discussed and we agreed on certain things um uh for example um hey my system is misbehaving i don't know why okay then um we also said certain things about that that uh, it's interesting and very important for any marketer to look at that 
because eventually uh, those are the guys we shall be looking at when we will be doing customer segmentation. We said that um, there are certain things that we must pay attention to when we are looking at the consumer market. We need to look at this kind of model uh, where we have on one hand the stimuli which makes somebody want to buy. We talked about the product services um, or services themselves, we talked about price, we talked about distribution or communication. We also talked about other stimuli like uh, technology, econo uh, the economy, political aspect, cultural amongst others. And all this informs the behavior that the customer will, um, will follow, okay? So all that model up to the time that the consumer actually makes a decision to buy, okay? So that is important for us to remember. And we tried to reiterate that in a small um, uh, way there. Um, similarly, we also had a small model there, just to remind some of you, uh, referring to the earlier one. Then we talked about um, certain aspects, like uh, if we are, able to, we are able to understand certain characteristics of the customer, cultural, sociocultural, personal, and psychological, then we should be able then to understand the consumer behavior very well. We discussed all this up to the time that we were looking at the types for, uh, of the decision buying behavior. We talked about the complex one, uh, where there is a high involvement of the customer. Uh, when the brands have um, a big difference in differentiation, uh, a situation where we have a variety seeking buyer where you have low involvement of the customer at the same time you are looking at um, a market also with different brands if a situation where we have fewer brands and uh, there we talked about um, uh, this uh, dissonance reducing behavior buying behavior of the customer with very high involvement and stuff like that so basically these are the things we looked at the other time Okay, up to looking at the, this is in, interesting for us because immediately when we begin looking at market segmentation, then we'll appreciate some of these things that of course a customer starts from a need recognition, such as for information, uh, evaluating alternatives, uh, purchase behavior and so on and so on. Okay, so basically those are the aspects that we looked at in our discussion last Friday. Okay, this uh, model that we had at the last slide brought in a lot of um, uh, discussion from you guys and uh, it was much appreciated that you could pick up some of the aspects that uh, come up from that model, okay? But basically we're trying to distinguish between the business to business kind of, um, uh, sorry about that, um, um, business to business or consumer uh, directly, okay? So um, why I was going there purposely is to ask whether you guys have been able to start this work and how, uh, are there any challenges that we're experiencing so far so that we are able to address and move on to other issues? Um, anyone who has looked at it or you are waiting for the last minute as usual? If you have particular issues that you would like to raise, kindly just raise it there. Remember the deadlines. Um, if none, I would like to quickly move on to a discussion for today. And uh, the discussion is quite interesting because we want, we want to talk about um, market segmentation. Okay. Now, We want to imagine uh, really that if you were a marketing manager in your own company and you wanted to ensure that you have developed a good strategy when it comes to ensuring that you increase um, sales particularly, uh, how then would you ensure that you focus a certain strategy on a certain sub market. So do, today we want to begin by appreciating certain things that first of all, a market 
both consumer and uh, business, including international markets and stuff like that. All of this, when you group them together, you will likely uh, appreciate the fact that we shall be calling those um, uh, our, 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 our market. These markets are normally very, I don't want to use a difficult word, but heterogeneous means that it has so many characteristics. Okay, If you were to sell these things the way it is, to the customer without thinking about the different characteristics of different regions, different parts of the market, then we should, we, there is a high chance that we will not be able to deliver an effective marketing strategy. So what we would like to discuss today is uh, uh, something that to me, I would uh, acknowledge is some kind of common sense approach. But for us, um, guys doing MBA, uh, we will need to to be able to craft strategies particularly for our customers so that we are able to meet them at their point of service okay so the point i would like to raise um, today is to take the large market and then uh, break it down into small components and i would like to pick on the experiences of some of you who are in the business of marketing product to share with us uh, today how you've targeted your customer. Uh, a week or so ago, we have um, a local telecommunications company here in Kenya, which is trying to get into the Ethiopian market, or should we say the regional market? But um, it's only recently that it was able to see what it can do in a market like the one that we have in Ethiopia. Uh, so I'll be sharing that experience again in the discussion today, uh, but I'd like to share the screen for today's discussion. Uh, where is it? Uh, there. Actually, there, okay. Just have a look at it. Second. Oh, um, I don't know if everyone of you is seeing the screen, then I would probably want to start by sharing something little there. First of all, by saying something about the market. Um, I want to say that uh, number one, a marketplace, um, a market is a place, sorry, which allows a buyer and a seller cause to meet together and do an exchange. Um, it actually is a place where uh, the exchange of goods and services happens. That is the broad market. And it's interesting because um, the market, in that market, there are so many sellers and there are also so many buyers. So the question that a manager, a sales manager needs to keep in mind or to ask himself or herself is among the many sellers, how best can you buy? How much can you sell in a good competition? That's the question that you need to ask. Okay. So today we want to see if this large market, in this very large market, look at the Ethiopian market and you are selling a specific, you're handling a specific uh, product. Let's look at something like a fast moving commodity like toothpaste, for example. Okay. Um, if you were the uh, sales manager in sitting in Addis and you would like to sell toothpaste across Ethiopia. You could be having two or so competitors within the country. Let's put it at four or five. Then you also have, uh, depending on the kind of market we'll be dealing with, uh, some kind of international competition. 
some goods coming in from say China, others coming in from Europe and places like this. How do you want to place your product? Do you want to use a distribution system? Do you want to sell your commodities online? So the questions that we'll be addressing then there would be trying to see how you can break your market into parts. Break it into components in such a way that you are able to address um, things um, in one way or another. So the issues that I want to raise in the beginning there is that markets are heter heterogeneous, which means it's a mixture of so many things, so many products, so many customers, living in different places, the customers or rather the consumers have different buying behaviors with the different kind of um, purchasing power and stuff like that. And still you need to sell, okay? So we need to understand from the beginning that the characteristics of consumers or indeed customers in any market are not the same, they're very different. People would have different purchasing power, others live in different regions, others would require, uh, if for example, um, let me just pick on an example from where I stay. Uh, and especially in this time of COVID-19, and some marketers are uh, experiencing very interesting times when their customers cannot be able to buy quantities that they used to sell before. So if, for example, um, let me use a simple example. I believe it, it's also common in, in, in Ethiopia of say sugar. So if people were, a uh, certain part of the population were buying a kilo of sugar per week and suddenly their income has gone down, that they are willing to buy, yes, sugar, but in smaller quantities, say in a half a kilo or a quarter per kilo, okay? If you were to take the quarter per kilo um, or the smaller packagings to, <laughs> Uh, to a market with the, with the, with people who can afford, you will have difficulties selling because they don't want small things. They consider that of poor quality. But again, if you are to sell the same commodity, the larger quantities in the smaller, uh, should I call them lower income uh, areas, you will find that those people may not afford to pay for that. And that's the reason then we're saying that it becomes important for us to break the market into smaller sections. So market then uh, is the aggregate of consumer or specific product or service. And of course, you're saying that segmentation makes them homogeneous. So when you separate, you create subgroups of your um, customers, depending on certain characteristics, which we shall agree in a short while, then you should be able then to appreciate many things. Um, For example, you'll be able to put them into, instead of having them in one large group, you break them into smaller groups with similar characteristics. That's why we're talking about to segment them to make them homogeneous. That is important for you to remember uh, as we go into this uh, discussion. Now quickly, um, uh, this introduction is coming in a bit uh, fast and furious. Uh, because we are introducing ourselves to uh, quick aspects about se uh, market segmentation just too soon. For example, we want to talk about certain things which I was trying to avoid. The, 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 the things I have uh, highlighted there or underlined, if you allow me to use uh, the highlighter, okay. Let me pick a spotlight somewhere. Okay, yeah, there. These issues, I was trying to avoid to bring them this early, but again, we have to say what uh, market segment, segmentation is all about. I want to say that um, if you were to pick the larger market, you need to break it down into subgroups of people, if you are dealing with a consumer market, or of businesses if you are dealing with uh, the business market or even international if you are dealing with uh, organizations, if you are dealing with organizations. So you need to break it down into subgroups, uh, which share one, I want to reiterate, only one attribute. 
So if you group people on the basis of say, um, something like income level, something like lifestyle, something like values or beliefs or be, uh, behavior, then you are able then to group them. That's why we are saying that talking about a market segmentation, sometimes it gives you quickly some things to do with the psychographics coming from the word psychology or lifestyles or stuff like that. However, of course, it is important for us to know that it is much of a, of a broader concept and normally looks at the business throughout the world. Whenever you want to do businesses internationally, you have to think about that. In a little company that uh, we, we operate, we have been able to identify our markets carefully. We deal in um, goat meat particularly, and we are able to know where to sell what part or what kind of premium product that we sell in what market. So basically, this refers, uh, ma uh, market segmentation refers to, and if you look at this, subdividing a market along some commonality or similarity. What are these shared attributes that you may want to have in uh, amongst uh, uh, customers? So it is a customers, it is the customers whom we segment, not the product and not price. I'm sorry, I missed something there. So when we are looking at uh, market segmentation, we are basically looking at the customers, the consumers, and not the product. There is no way you can segment product or even prices. Okay, so this is something that we will need to look at uh, seriously. But why do we do that? Why do we want to put our consumers into subgroups with certain common uh, aspects uh, or commonalities uh, in terms of certain attributes or character? So it is very simple. Uh, we want to mention this, that uh, the purpose of segmentation is to concentrate, should I say focus your marketing energy and force on the subdivision, or should we, let's call it the, the segment itself. Normally we do this for one powerful reason. We want to be better than our competitor. So ideally, the main reason why we want to do uh, market segmentation is to be able to, 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 to focus our energy so that we just don't work arbitrarily. If you are a general in the army, and I know Ethiopians are very good in the military um, strategy, you need to have somebody who can focus the energy, the resources of your platoon or something like that to be able to uh, uh, beat the enemy. So in this case, your enemies, as it were, in, in, in quotation marks, are not are rather are your competitor. So what is this thing that you can do better than your competitor? And this way you have to understand your, uh, your market so well by breaking it down into smaller components. So that when you are addressing a certain part of the market, you are sure that you are doing it better than your competitor. It is similar in principle to what you call the military, uh, war, I mean principle of concentrating the force to beat the enemy, okay? Uh, let's get some guys who are still in the waiting room. I kept them there for a while, okay? I hope you are joining in now. Good. So we are saying that uh, the discussion we are having about market segmentation can resonate very well with the, what we use in the military as concentrating force. Okay? So focusing on a certain section of the market will help you particularly understand how best you can manage that section of the market because they're all different, okay? So concentration of the marketing strategy, ladies and gentlemen, or the force as it were, is essential of all marketing strategy. And marketing segmentation is a conceptual tool to help achieve this work. Okay. Uh, Something I collected just a while ago when I was waiting for uh, another class. 
was this issue that um, if you are to do uh, market segmentation very well, then you should be able to make the right choices to target a market. So you break your market into smaller components and then you are able then to target it. So that means you have to do the right, uh, uh, it, it facilitates the right choice of the target market so that you are able to target or focus your resources on that particular market. It also facilitates what we call effective tapping of chosen market. So if you have chosen a market, for example, of a, uh, let's say you are selling a gadget like mobile phones. Okay. I see some of you are using apples, for example. Apple, for example, has chosen to serve a market which is, and tap a market which is at the high end. There's, there are those customers who will focus a lot more on, uh, for example, I don't know whether techno is available in Addis. But Addis is looking at selling technology, mobile phone technology, to the lower color of uh, customers. We also want to say that uh, market segmentation, um, also looking at how efficient uh, the efforts in marketing can be. Okay, So it makes marketing effort more efficient and more economic. Efficient means that you are doing the right thing in the right way. And therefore, you're likely going to use resources in a better way. Fewer resources to do a lot. Um, you do more with less. That is the argument that I wanted to put in there. Uh, finally, we want to say that um, uh, segmenting markets also help, uh, uh, help us to identify less satisfied segments uh, and concentrate on them. Uh, sometimes, and I don't know, uh, maybe I should be able to allow comments from you guys about this point. If you are in business, I know most of you are in business, how do we address an issue of opportunity recognition? How do we go about this? Uh, if you remember in our first class, I shared with you, uh, in the first class I shared with you um, uh, something called a business a business canvas model. What this one is, uh, is that... Sorry, doctor, for interrupting. Some students... Can I ask that guy to speaker, mute doctor. His... Yes, yes. Some students didn't meet their speaker, and it's very disturbing. I don't know it is. I'm trying to look through. I can't see. Nuriye? Yeah. Mute Adrga. Tagasu mute Adrga. Most of the guys have muted their own. I don't know. Okay, then let's proceed. Um, uh, Girma, thank you. Um, I'd like somebody to tell me something about this point. Um, if you are in a, if you are a marketing manager, how do you identify opportunities? There was an argument we made, uh, we, we, we did do or uh, made in our first class that sometimes there are markets which are not served. Sometimes we have markets which are underserved. Sometimes we have markets which have been completely ignored. And by doing segmentation of this market, it allows us to identify this, this less satisfied segment so that we are able to serve them. Because these are opportunities. Everybody is running for markets which are already understood. But there are those which are left out. I want to challenge some of you who are in business to think about this point very well. Um, moving forward, this is what um, we mean by market segmentation generally. Um, if you looked at that graphic at the beginning of the arrow, 
I believe on your left side, with individuals having different colors. You have, you have a mixture of red. Is that orange? For the gentleman, I'm sure you are calling it yellow. Is it yellow or orange? I have no idea also. We are colorblind. For the men, I will not blame you if you say it is yellow or whatever color you are seeing. But I'm sure you are seeing green, red, and some yellow, I believe. That is the general market, as it were. But now you need to break down that market because, as we said earlier, it is kind of heterogeneous, which means it is mixed up. If we served a market like that in the way that it is, with that kind of mixture, we will not be able to target our strategy very well. So it is difficult to develop action plans to be able to address a market like this. So we need them to pull these reds because I'm assuming these reds have a similar characteristic. Let's talk about uh, something characteristics, uh, characteristic like uh, high, in, let's talk about income. Let's assume these guys in red are high income. Then we need to isolate them, of course, for the purpose of serving them better. We can even charge them a higher price, whatever it is, but we need to keep them uh, separate. Let's assume that the guys in, uh, can we call them yellow? If they accept, uh, if you guys accept that we call them yellow, these are, uh, and assuming that this uh, the characteristic on the basis on which we are looking at this is income, uh, sorry, uh, then the middle income can go, uh, can go to the middle there and we serve them also appropriately in terms of how do you communicate to them? How do we charge them? How do we distribute the products to them and stuff like that? Then these green guys here, uh, let's assume that they are of a lower income. Remember, we have not talked about the character, I mean the basis on which to separate or to segment or to create subgroups are of lower income. These guys in green here. So if we decide that we group the low income uh, guys here, then we are able then to target our strategy very well. Now, at this point in time, there's a question that I had in my mind, which I wanted to ask you guys to help me. I want you to think about a company, either the one you are working for, um, or a company that you relate with, then we can see how in those companies you guys have been able to uh, separate uh, your customers so that you are able to serve them. I know most of you are bankers. So let's assume this is the Ethiopian population. Would you serve them in the same way? That's the question that I would like you to keep in your mind as you proceed. Would you be able then to think about a system of separating or isolating these groups one by one so that you are able to target your customer? If I am a bank manager, for example, and I'm giving out credit, should I not think about picking the large population in, in, in Ethiopia and either putting them into regions or putting them into income groups uh, or what they do and stuff like that and see how to address each of the groups? We will want to revisit this um, uh, figure uh, much later, but let's move on and look at the basis on which we can uh, discriminate or rather separate. Uh, Customers. Customers. Ubuntu, kindly mute your. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, so on what basis are we? I mean, uh, segregating this this custom. Marketers, uh, the likes of uh, Philip Kotler, uh, Armstrong, amongst others, suggest about five. They say you can actually take a, a market and break it into. Uh, geographic region. Okay, so seated in, um, in in an office in Addis, and you would like to market a product. You want to target market a product. What do you do? You need to look at the market and break it down. Maybe uh, by the regions. Maybe you can break it down into uh, even further sub regions. I don't know. You can also look at other aspects like. Uh, we will we'll, we'll discuss this in detail in a short while. Demographics, characteristics of the population itself. How do you go about that? 
would you want to look at a product that we are targeting a gen, uh, gender specific aspect? Or do you want to look at age? Do you want to look at lifestyles? You know, and all those things, you need to look at those. If you are in uh, textiles, for example, this would be very interesting for you because now you need to break down your customers so that you are able to uh, address different types of demographics within the, say, the Ethiopian uh, population or the East African population or the African population or even the global um, uh, population. You can generate an idea to be able to address a specific group of the population as we shall be seeing in a short while. We can also look at sociocultural aspects. I will not have good examples to give you from uh, Ethiopia, but on the Kenyan side or even in the US side, it's easy for you to, for example, develop a product for a certain social class of people or people of certain cultural orientation who can buy or would appreciate uh, enjoying certain types of products and services. And then psychographic issues, again, we'll be seeing in a short while, probably this is the most powerful because you are looking at the psychology of certain groups of people people with different attitudes, people with different kind of um, uh, psychological aspects. Then of course, the buying behavior of the customer. Okay, Like I know if I wanted to do uh, design certain aspect of a market, I will need to look at uh, buying behavior of the customer. For example, if you are selling uh, a certain commodity at a particular time of the day, say in the evening, when people are leaving work, then you may want to put certain product in strategic location. I remember um, my first job um, before I went into the academia, I used to be a sales manager in a multinational company. And what we used to do at that time was we, whenever we go into a shop or a supermarket, we would, uh, because we're dealing with fast moving commodities with very many alternatives, would always negotiate with the shop owners to have our product uh, strategically located. That means the moment you just walk into the shop, you would see most of our product there. If you were to go to the shelves for soap, the first ones you will meet would come from that company and stuff like that. Because we wanted to address uh, people who have this ab a habit or behavior of a, what you call a impulse uh, buying. And we would clean them so well and organize them in a very attractive way, okay? Now, looking at these things in a graphic may give you an idea. Um, we can take the larger market, which we say is heterogeneous, mixed up with so many characters, and we want to break it down into a certain aspect. Uh, for example, um, We would want to have issues to do with the demographics. So we break down this large market into that kind of, uh, using that attribute. We can still take the large market and break it down into buying behavior or psychographic aspects, groups, or sociocultural. The very common ones that we use in marketing is number one, geographic. You can break the region, say, of Addis into uh, certain specific regions, sub-regions, um, certain clusters, and then you can target your strategy to market there. Or demographics, these are the most common ones. Uh, sometimes you can look at the other three, okay? Now, um, let me go back to that slide. Um, The discussion that we shall be following in a short while, uh, I would like you to have a mental picture of this uh, graphic. Look at the market of the company that you are working or the company that you own, or probably you can even think about an imaginary one, but it would be nice to look at this because 
uh, after we finish a certain discussion, I would like us to break into small groups, and then I would like to hear from you what you guys think about breaking a market into segments. Okay. So um, that slide takes us to this one, which is very interesting, because now on the basis of this, on the basis of these others, geographic, demographic, social, cultural, all those, then we are able to create certain types of market segmentation. The first one, for example, geographic segmentation is based on the geographic characteristics, okay? So I want to say that this is perhaps the most common, okay? Common everywhere, uh, where, where companies uh, segment the market by attacking a restricted geographic area. Many companies, for example, um, in Adi, I mean in Ethiopia, could be located in Addis. I stand corrected. And they have to serve the entire population of Ethiopia. If you were to develop a strategy which is not focusing on certain regions, you will likely not be effective. Even if you wanted to be effective, there is a high chance you will not be efficient because you will do you'll have to use a lot of resources to be able to do that. So some of the aspects that we want to say is that you can break the regions on the basis of urban or rural. Is it possible for you to target your product on an urban area or a rural area? Is it possible for you to target your product to the north of Ethiopia or to the south or east or west? Depending on how you want to look at it, you want to cluster them. In, in, in Kenya, for example, we have what you call uh, counties, which are semi-autonomous from the national government. There are 47 of them. Some marketers have seen that as an opportunity to target their product. So they would break, um, they would pick their country as this heterogeneous market and then split it into 47 units called counties and then serve them like that. There are cases, for example, where some Marketers would look at cities or urban areas within certain regions and focus on them. Um, this is common um, because if you looked at uh, the tires of cities, uh, in Ethiopia, for example, the senior most city is Addis. And then you have other cities below them. Okay? So you can focus your products to those uh, specific cities, uh, sub cities and then towns so that those towns can serve the interior okay or you can focus straight on the interior of the country depending on the kind of product you are dealing with of course we know very well that it is better and easier for a marketer to serve large populations in cities and urban areas but there will be those who will be underserved in the interior or in the rural area in some other areas you can focus your energies or strategy on warm areas, or others you will, we will target on cold ones. High humidity or, low, or dry areas. Okay? You can even look at, so, so whatever characteristic that gives you um, an opportunity to divide your region into specific smaller uh, regions to be able to deal with them, uh, develop a marketing strategy for them, get a workforce there, say you are a regional sales manager, and stuff like that. Let's stop for a minute and ask ourselves, supposing you are a manager of a multinational, a company operating in so many countries, and you are dealing with a certain commodity. Let's speak, for example, mobile phone. How would you go about dividing the world into specific markets? Do you want to have the African market, for example, or the Asian market, or the European market, or the American market? How do you go about it? Even when you go to those specific uh, sub-markets, how do you then even address it further? If it were in Africa, for example, do you want to look at West African region? Do you want to look at the East African region? Uh, you, do you want to look at the Maghreb region that's uh, in the, the northern part of uh, Africa, or do you want to look at the southern part of Africa? What strategies would you use? So, Geographic segmentation gives us that idea of doing that. 
okay? Uh, if you have a question around there, you'll kindly take uh, a note, just write it down and then we'll raise it, uh, all the questions at one time. Okay, so secondly, we would like to look at the second one, which is distribution segmentation, okay? Here, we want to look at um, different markets on the basis of how we can develop a distribution system. Okay, so different markets can be reached through different channels, channels of distribution. The common one is you can have, uh, say, the from the production point, then we can distribute them using maybe a certain uh, chain. For example, you can take them to supermarket. Then from the supermarket, customers can buy from there. Another way is to have the, from the from production, you distribute them through wholesalers and then to retailers. Others, you can decide to even decide to target by opening a shop that is normally commonly known as the factory shop, which gives the best prices or something like that. Um, fairly recently, we had a very interesting, um, we have a company which uh, processes and packages milk in Eldoret. And at one point in time, competition was very, very stiff to the extent that they were unable to sell. So they approached uh, one of my colleagues who we had a discussion and we made a very simple uh, recommendation that what the company needs, needs to do is to open shop just at their gate. And then initially, that company decided to sell their stuff at the gate themselves. But when the business became large, it decided to subcontract the, the selling of the product at their own gate. And apparently, people began to learn about that and they began driving and buying it from their shop, uh, from their, just at their factory gate to buy the milk because what they did was they ensured that they produced milk of a very high quality. So suddenly in my small town uh, here in Kenya, people began going to buy products just at the factory to get. So again, that's a strategy. Sometimes it can work, sometimes it may not, okay? So I want to say that um, some examples, supermarkets under one brand. So you can have a chain of supermarkets cutting across the country with the same brand or in major cities or something like that. Or you can do what you call uh, mass merchandisers uh, using another brand. Uh, or you can even use stores or something like that. So this type of dist uh, distributional segmentation is common, especially among small companies that grant each channel a unique brand or gain distribution within that channel. Um, I want to challenge, uh, should I raise this at this point in time? Supposing you are a sales manager of um, soft beverages in Ethiopia, would you not consider distribution segmentation as key? Again, I would like to have that answer after a while when we finish this. Um, another type of segmentation is what you call media, okay? Um, now, if you looked at this, uh, media segmentation is based on how to distribute uh, information or to share out information to a potential customer. So again, we are saying it is based on the fact that different media tend to reach different audience. Media here could be radio, for example, could be television, it could be newspapers daily newspaper. It could be magazines. There is also the new media, which is the internet. 
So how do you work with this? Okay. How do you group your market so that you are able to use, say, radio or television? Lately, from my own experience and the experiences of those people who have been engaged in marketing, radio is no longer as effective because many people rarely listen to radio in some parts of the world. Like in Kenya, it's difficult to find somebody listening to radio because people who have radios would prefer to listen to music in other uh, ways like using CD, flash disks, and so on and so forth. TV, yes. Newspaper is normally read by some mature people. Some, some people who, the people who read a hard copy of newspapers are normally the, the senior citizens on average, generally. The young people would prefer using social media. They would prefer using digital uh, or soft copies of the magazine or the newspaper and stuff like that. So we can look at those um, aspects of the market and ask ourselves, if indeed uh, we wanted to sell or rather promote a certain product, then we need to identify the right media to use. So we segment or we, we group our customers on the basis of what message to send to them using what kind of media, okay? So media segmentation in the last line there is most often practiced by companies that have some control over the media and can uh, somehow discourage competitors from using that kind of media. Um, I do not know, I am not so sure uh, about um, the way the media is structured and owned in Ethiopia. But in a country like Italy, for example, the media is controlled by companies associated with one guy called Silvio uh, Berlusconi, who is the former prime minister. And interestingly, apart from the national uh, media, most of the others are companies associated with that only one person. So you can imagine how that person can be able to manage and co to control products that he, he would like to promote because they control the media house. Again, uh, take a little note there because later on we are coming back to that and we would like to focus a lot on uh, uh, our country, that's Ethiopia, so that we can be able to share ideas on what is the reality there and what is going on. Then the fourth one, which I believe I pushed it deliberately to go to number four, otherwise it should have been the second one, is price segmentation. I want to say this, that whenever you are segmenting market, price becomes very important. Because markets, or should we say populations, have different kind of marketing, rather of purchasing power. So you need to differentiate your market on the basis of those which, those um, income brackets which are able to afford your product. You may think uh, uh, or differentiate a little bit of the product so that you are able to address certain groups of, uh, of, of customers. So price segmentation is common. In fact, uh, let's ask uh, Getahun, please. Getahun, please. Uh, ah, good. I also had the same problem earlier when I was starting the class. Kids running all over the place. So is understood. This is a special time in our lives, so we have to learn using all means. Eh? Ideally, we should be in a classroom, but now we have our families and they don't know, and they don't even care anyway <laughs> of whether you are studying or not. Uh, times like this are their times. Uh, so I want to say that this, uh, when you look at the market, you have to segment it on the basis, commonly on the basis of price. 
I want to take this very simple example. Um, telecommunication companies, telcos in, uh, in Kenya have been able to do something very interesting about selling of um, uh, internet connectivity. Um, internet connectivity to students in high schools and primary schools is now free if you are accessing educational uh, material. For students in colleges and universities, they pay something like 40% of what they could have paid on normal circumstances. And there is a reduction also on the price generally of internet in this country. The reason is, although they are, uh, they, they are discriminating kind of, having the children accessing it almost for free, uh, some companies charge a little uh, one-off payment a week. Uh, it is a way of kind of segmenting and saying that we want to support children to learn. And they even post, they will list the sites that you visit using free internet or very cheap internet uh, connectivity. And they will charge those ones of us who do business with it higher price than normal. Okay, so it's, it's weird, but that's what is going on. So that price variation depends on what you call household incomes as it is indicated there. And of course, I want to say that it creates an opportunity to segment some markets along price dimension. So personal income is of the essence in this case. Okay. Then number five, again, these two should have come second or third in that order so that the media one comes later. Demographic is very interesting again because you can actually uh, make groups or subgroups of your market on the basis of gender. This is sensitive so that you can make products uh, that appeal to say the female gender or the male gender to the children, for example, depending on age, uh, to the elderly, depending, of course, that is age again, to the youth and stuff like that. Then on the basis of income also, you can still seg uh, segregate or separate your market on the basis of income. Low incomes are here, high incomes are there and stuff like that. Uh, housing type also, it's interesting. Uh, some people who own bungalows or mansionettes, uh, you can target your product that goes for that class of people. Educational level also is important. You can associate certain uh, variation of your product with a certain class of education um, in the community. Okay, so these are common variables. There could be others, but they are based on the I mean the communication. Um, I don't know, just think about it because the question that uh, I'm going to ask you will come around these issues. I really would like to understand um, on what basis can you segment a market in Addis, okay? Uh, or in Ethiopia generally? Which is, which is the most common one? Which one do you think is the most effective? So some examples are given there. There are some brands which target only women. There are those which target only men. There are those who target the youth or the young and stuff like that. Okay. So um, you can also look at levels of technology amongst others. Okay. So uh, time is, um, this one I found it very interesting. Um, it is also possible for you to look at your market in terms of time segmentation. Although this is less common, but um, I remember in Addis, uh, sometime in February or thereabouts, there was a very interesting holiday. I've forgotten the name, but if I remember, I'll let you know. Um, but you can actually prepare or look at your market in terms of seasons only, so that you're able to say, this is Christmas. These are the things that are associated with, uh, with Christmas. These are the, 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 the things that are associated with a particular point of the day. For example, uh, 
some years ago when I was a young person and I was running a small shop, uh, my parents' shop, sometimes you would open the shop early in the morning at 4 a.m. and run it up to about 8 o'clock and uh, 8 or 9 there. And then you leave and go do other things. Uh, somebody else runs the shop and then later on in the evening, you open it to make sure that you are serving customers who are late. Okay, so you can look at time and ask yourself regarding your product, is it possible to uh, divide your time in terms of, I mean, yes, uh, divide your market consumers on the basis of time. There are those early risers who would like to purchase early in the morning, there are those who would like to purchase over the weekend, there are those who would like to, um, so you can open, I, I know, for example, um, this is weird. I spent some time in, 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 in Italy and uh, they have a habit, habit of opening in a city called Bologna. They open their supermarket on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays only. The rest of the days they are closed. Okay. And some of the people would attribute that and say that if you were to open throughout, uh, the day you will spend more time, more energy, you need more more staff and stuff like that. And you still do the same sales if you are to open for only three days in a week. Because the moment you open, people know that this is on the only time that the shops or other the supermarkets are open and they will go there to do their purchase. Although there, there could be some kind of um, uh, congestion, but at the end of the day, it works very well for that particular uh, part of the city. I mean, that city, okay? So the time dimension, ladies and gentlemen, can be an interesting basis for segmentation. I would like to ask again, whether there is such a thing that can happen in Addis. If, for example, um, you were selling, you are a telecommunications company, is it possible for you to look at uh, usage of um, uh, mobile, services and say that from a certain time in the day say from um, like i know this uh, these guys are weird in, in, in kenya for example they would make it so cheap to call from 10 o'clock in the evening 10 p.m up to 4 a.m i wonder who is talking at that time to who but they make it so cheap almost free and then in the morning they make it so expensive so that the time uh, the timing is kind of going up and down Similarly, when it comes to the internet, it is very cheap. Uh, internet is very cheap after or about midnight, up to early morning, okay? So is it possible for you to target your product or services on the basis of that? Then we have also what we call occasional, rather, or occasion-based segmentation. So this one, of course, is based on occasions. Um, could be on the basis of festive in the, in the, in the year or something like that. Uh, so here the argument is that people tend to behave differently and think differently at different times or occasions. Uh, for example, uh, during Easter, there are people who will not, uh, courtesy of their religion, they will not be eating uh, certain meats or certain products. They consume less of others during some other times and stuff like that. So you can use these to segment your market. Okay. Then the most common one is what we call lifestyle segmentation. Again, this one should have become number three there or number four there or five, not number eight, but I put it deliberately at the end. Okay. So psycho, uh, psychographic or what you call lifestyle segmentation is very important because you are looking at the lifestyle of uh, your consumer. Because lifestyle normally um, influences attitudes of the customers, or the consumer, sorry. It will influence also the values of that uh, individual. It will also influence, influence the behaviors, emotions, perceptions, beliefs, and so many other things, including needs. Um, I'm aware, for example, of a, a car maker like Ferrari, which only sells to a certain class of people. Uh, one time uh, I visited their factories and they were saying they will only sell a unit of the cars they make 
to people who have some history. That means uh, your father, your grandfather, that generation must be people who are important in society. Okay, I know it's discriminative, but that's what they do. And that is why you will not see these cars commonly driven everywhere. Of course, the few people who buy will pay for the rest of us who cannot afford to pay because the cars are very expensive. So the psychographic or lifestyle segmentation is a focus of marketing. You need to look at all these things so that you are able to develop a strategy that works. For what kind of people? Wherever they are and stuff like that. Okay. So this one, again, is interesting because by understanding, you need, uh, if you wanted to understand the psychographic characteristics of a certain group of people, then you need to conduct what you call a qualitative exercise. For example, you can conduct what you call a um, uh, focused group discussion. You find a few people who are in a certain uh, lifestyle group and then ask them what they really want. Okay. There are some guys who will not wear anything if it is not jeans, for example. There are people who would prefer to wear a certain kind of clothing uh, just because they want to show they belong to a certain class. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to, um, I didn't want to show you that. I want to ask you guys to think about, um, uh, we are 35 right now. Uh, I want to ask um, if we can, we can, we can be broken into groups and then we are able to Trying to look for. I want us to try to break into groups and then we see whether we can. I would like you, um, we are 34 of us. So 34, if we were to go into, say, five groups, uh, August. I'd like to ask you which is the best way of distributing us into groups? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, please. Uh, is it possible uh, for you to we, give a... Yeah, we have already a group. Yes, yes, good. We can uh, just uh, join that group and uh, we can discuss it. Yes, discuss and then come back. The thing I'd like you to do is to please help me to understand the Ethiopian market. On what basis are we, uh, can we segment them? Can we segment using the eight? Uh, which companies right now use any of those eight? Okay. Uh, I am so, uh, working in commercial uh, bank, actually. Yes, good. Uh, that's already, you mentioned many of them uh, uh, already. And in geographical, uh, demographic, yes. gender, age. Yes. All mm -hmm. are there in commercial mm -hmm. bank. Mm -hmm. uh, we can discuss that and uh, we can uh, come to your answer if you, request, you have a question. Uh, very good. Can we take uh, five minutes? Can I unmute all of you? Yes. <laughs> በተመረጥ ከፍ ከፈብሎ መብረር ይቻላል ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይ ስህት ኩባንያ ከከፍተኛ ትምርት አግባብነትና ጥራት ኤጀንሲ ሙሉ ቅናና ባገኘንባቸው በማስተርስ ዲግሪ MBA በስትራቴጂክ MBA ማኔጅመንት MBA በባንኪንግ እና ፋይናንስ MBA በቢዝነስ ሊደርሺፕ MBA በሪስክ እና ኢንሹራንስ MSc በኢንተርናሽናል ትሬድ እና ኢኮኖሚክስ ዘርፎች በእውቀት ለመቅረጽ ይበቁ ፕሮፌሰሮቻችን አረንጓዴ መብራታቸውን አብርተዋል በነገራችን ላይ በኬንያ ሀገር ከሚገኙ ስመጥር ዩኒቨርሲቲዎች በሚመጡ ፕሮፌሰሮች የትኩረት መስክ ትምርቶቹ መሰጣታቸው ልዩ ያደርገናል በመርጥ የትምርት ስርዓት የተገነባው ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ በመጀመሪያ ዲግሪ በአቪዬሽን ማኔጅመንት በሆቴል ማኔጅመንት በአካውንቲንግ እና ፋይናንስ በማርኬቲንግ ማኔጅመንት አስተማማኝ ትምርት ይገብዩና ራሱንና ሀገሩን ይለውጡ አድራሻ 22 አደባባይ ወደ ሾላ በሚወስዶ መንገድ ላይ ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይ ስህት ኩባንያ ህልሞን አሁን ያደርጋል ለስታርት ዋ ዲስካሽን ሌዲስ አንድ ጀንትመን ሶሪ አባውት ዳት
something happened with my connection. So kindly, let's just discuss. Anyone with a, a good example, Moges had started with a commercial bank. Just raise up your hand, we'll pick you. Yeah, yes, doctor, thank you yes. for giving me the chance. Uh, yes. In commercial bank, we have uh, a segmentation uh, on uh, gender. We have mm -hmm. women's account Good. for women's. Uh, we give some uh, extra uh, whenever they purchase from a, a supermarket. We give mm -hmm. them two percent discount from the the supermarkets, and we give them mm -hmm. the interest that seven point two five zero point two five is an increment for them. Mm -hmm. uh, on age wise. We use, mm -hmm. use, use account, uh, mm -hmm. teen use account, which is also favorable for different age groups. Mm -hmm. That is our segmentation. Uh, what mm -hmm. we, I got from you is now educational level also, we have education uh, account, but uh, it's not mm -hmm. labeled to higher education level, lower education, or uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. which we are going to uh, consider that also. Thank you, Doctor. This we have. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Morges. Let's get somebody else. Yeah. Uh, I, can I continue? Yes, sir? yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, uh, this is the Spatiros, just as uh, Maugus has uh, communicated us. There are also, uh, okay, there are also just practices, just as far as this uh, bank has been a long time since it has already joined the market, more than around 77 years in the market. It was a mass-oriented uh, market, it was using mass-oriented market, but in the uh, near uh, times, maybe around 10 years, it started to communicate all world us to have uh, information for external market assessment process, to have an information uh, in regard age by age, by gender, by religion, and other uh, interesting, uh, other uh, relevant information, other factors just like, mm -hmm. which uh, which businesses are available, development partners, uh, and also the highly uh, growing companies, new entrant uh, companies, international businesses, such kind of information are collected by each branch of the organization from the nearby uh, world us in the sub cities and other kind of uh, small towns, every kind of market, external market assessment is done. By having this, they start focusing on the most uh, important part of the business so that they can exploit. Most importantly, this our market focuses not on the resource allocation, but resource uh, mobilization, meaning the deposit and foreign currency collection. It focuses in this one because the market for the resource allocation is enough. We need too much resource or collection uh, process. Thus, uh, the habit or the experience in the CVE. Other most important part, what I have learned from uh, the Commercial Bank of uh, Ethiopia, it uses integrated marketing strategy in diversified uh, products. It says like this one. Uh, it looks like this, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Plus, okay. Plus, the, uh, the niche market is also implemented that for the most important customers. There are also superior value customers. These superior value uh, customers, so as uh, to have any kind of connection with, with the commercial bank of Ethiopia, niche market is also implemented. Mm -hmm. it looks like this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, who's hand is up? Can we hear the voice of a lady? I see the men are dominating the whole class. Uh, 
um, okay, anyone would like to say something? Uh, there's one question I have for um, Morges, uh, particularly. I'm just wondering, how do you discriminate in terms of, um, was it Morges? Somebody talked about religion. How do you do that? Uh, we have, uh, thank you, doctor, for your question. We have yes. Islamic banking mm -hmm. uh, and uh, integrated uh, separately. We are serving uh, mm -hmm. Islamic uh, based on Sharia uh, mm -hmm. and Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot explain it properly, actually, the Quran. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But Sharia the Quran, in general, uh, yeah, I understand, yes. You understand me, yeah. yeah. Uh, we yes, 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 have right. interna uh, uh, IFB account, which is interest-free banking. They need, they, know, mm -hmm. they don't need an interest. They deposit their money mm -hmm. and we use, mm -hmm. they use that money, not for uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Quran permitted only based on the religion mm -hmm. based financial that we serve them maybe mm -hmm. Tasfakiros can add some uh, points on this <laughs> yes yes yeah, i can hear him thank you Morgan. Mohammed. Mohammed. yes 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 Mohammed, please yeah yeah uh, thank you i'm uh, i'm studying doctor i'm studying interest free banking and islamic financial service in a certificate in Islamic Research Institute, mm -hmm. which is found in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, of, of course, the area is one of the areas or the fields which is the most ignored or not understood way. Even the professionals mm -hmm. in the bank, even the professionals mm -hmm. in the bank, they are not understanding it well. And some of mm -hmm. them are telling us that this service is segregation to the Muslims. No, this is wrong. This service is actually mm -hmm. space, is, space is based on the Quran and the Hadith. But the service is for all. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Muslims preferred it mm -hmm. because of their uh, mm -hmm. religion that they don't want to use like what they call riba or the interest. But the service mm -hmm. is for all. Anyone who don't want to use the interest he can use the service. This is like only the saving part mm -hmm. in the bank. But there are a lot of mm -hmm. service that, that can be given in this type of uh, financial service. Mm -hmm. Like someone who went mm -hmm. to give his money to the bank and to invest it in some kind of investment area mm -hmm. and went to share profit, he can use it. This is called mudaraba, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, mm -hmm. contributing money and uh, profit in share. Uh, so there are a lot mm -hmm. of service in this, in this type of financial service. Of course, the name itself is interest free, mm -hmm. not Islamic, uh, like it is used wrongly. Mm -hmm. Interest free. Of course, the source <laughs> of the law is Islamic, but it's interest free. But the yes. basis interest free. When you go to Kenya and your country, Sharia law. Yeah. Yeah. In your, in your country, mm -hmm. doctor, is the famous one, you know. Uh, many people use it. There are yeah, banks. Mm -hmm. There are banks uh, even in London, which is the secular state. Mm -hmm. They are using it in the uh, UK, mm -hmm. in US. Mm -hmm. So uh, the service mm -hmm. is for all, for all, not as a segregation to not mm -hmm. based on religion, but because in our country, mm -hmm. because in our country is just as mm -hmm. a, a grassroots level. So they are starting mm -hmm. to promote the service from the Muslims. Mm -hmm. That's why my mm -hmm. friend calling it segregations to the Muslims. But <laughs> it's a service for all, of them, you know. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Mohammed. It's interesting, uh, <laughs> colleagues, because um, nearly all banks in, 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 in Kenya, almost all of them, maybe 95% thereabouts, all of them have uh, sections where they the, the staff people who are interested in following uh, the Sharia banking, uh, 
the, the, they call it Islamic bank, all banks, commercial, uh, even international banks have sections which, as uh, Mohammed put it, it's meant for anyone if you choose to do it or not. Uh, thank you, Mohammed. Uh, there is uh, the Messi. The Messi, please. Okay, sorry. Let's listen to the Messi and then yes, we can come to you. Okay. Yes. Yes, yeah, doctor. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Continue, please. It is a shitty. The Mr. Shetty. Yes, yes, yes. I think, please, uh, yes, yes. Continue, please. Oh, okay, thank you, doctor. I think you need to Time. Are you still there? Geographical segmentation is very important. Segmentation and geographical segmentation in today's very important, especially in Addis. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, doctor. Yes, yes, yes. I can hear you. So you're talking about geography? Geographic, time and psychographic segmentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, very good. Thank you. Uh, anyone else would like to make a contribution? Okay, may I say something, sir? doctor? Sorry. Yes, this Kapiros, please. Is it? Uh, yes, this is the Spatiros. The uh, IFP yes. product is uh, about the interest rate. There, I hope there might be uh, some kind of uh, misunderstanding when uh, Moses has communicated us. But I wanted to say something about that one. As Muhammad has communicated us, there are very exciting uh, professionals. For example, in the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia, they are very exciting, they are well known as well as they know the product, what IFP is. Therefore, there are high uh, or with superior kind of knowledge as well as with superior kind of attitude towards that one. The, they do promote the Sharia uh, rules and regulations. Uh, what makes it different from the most or from the conventional uh, products is mm -hmm. they do promote us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are here telling some kind of uh, information for the sake of segregation or for the sake of segmentation purpose, not the right uh, one as the uh, brother of mine has communicated. But I want to observe, we, uh, or uh, Commercial Bank of Ethiopia has a product, interest-free banking product. It's led by a subsidiary, led by a vice president. It has its own board of directors. It focuses customers who do not want to take any kind of interest but they wanted to share a profit mm -hmm. that's the intention of that one if they want to have also to invest they will invest a percentage of amount of money and they will take a share from the profit also the, there are various uh, products wadi amana mudaraba and other there are around uh, 12 uh, products, saving uh, products, as well as the investment products, the professional pro products. We do, CB has a detailed material over that. Therefore, it's also serving in the first place or in priority, it serves the Islamic, as well as a bet. Plus, if there are also any interested person to, to be served in this case, it's open enough. Everybody can take that advantage. I want to add uh, this information, but we could not say there are no professionals there. There are too much professionals. They know the Sharia as well as they know the business rule. Therefore, they are there to serve the community of Ethiopia and the other international people. I want to add this kind of information. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Gerachu uh, Adunya. Yes, uh, Doctor. Uh, Thank you and uh, yes. others as well. So may I come yes. in and ask one one question? What is the ultimate objective of uh, market segregation? I wanted to ask this um, so that we can relate to the businesses in Ethiopia and how they are applying the market segmentation. For example, the Ethiopian, I'm sorry, the EBC, Ethiopian um, Commercial Bank of Ethiopia, Mm -hmm. And I wanted to hear from uh, these guys, my friends, 
in terms of it is objective. If uh, the objective is profitability from the bank side, that is another history. Um, so really, I wanted to hear and relate the market, um, the market segmentation objective of uh, Commercial Bank of Ethiopia with its, um, the, the general objective of the market segment in general as a principle. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Admasu, I don't know where you are. Very noisy. Um, anyone would like to say something? Uh, Mohammed and... Uh, okay, may I come in? Sit the, sit the, yeah? Okay, may I come in? Sorry. Yes, uh, yes, yes, please. I was looking for you, yes. Yes, Getacho was uh, specifically asking to us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I wanted to say something. When we come to Ethiopia, I want to communicate is that uh, the environment, our environment looks like we don't have, especially if you, you can, uh, we have heard in the last week, there is around 113 billion amount of per mark oh. circulating in the market, which mm -hmm. not in the bank. Meaning we do have huge amount of cashless society. One. Mm -hmm. In the second place, our society is not digital. Two cases in here. Not digital means there are underbankable society as well as there is also unbankable society. Underbankable plus mm -hmm. unbankable society, huge amount of underbankable and unbankable society is available in here. When we come to the whole institutions within our uh, nation, around 18 financial institutions, the number of accounts within 2019 20, uh, 20 mm -hmm. it is 33.5 million not number of customers but number of accounts only mm -hmm. meaning around less than 30 percent of the people mm -hmm. or 30 percent of the people we cannot say the people but number of accounts because a customer ha may have four or three accounts mm -hmm. Maybe Most twenty percent, we can say, yeah, around twenty percent of the people is coming to the bank only. The other eighty percent is not using banking products. This means mm -hmm. from this, from this, we can learn that the whole people is not bankable, or even the system is not okay in CBE. Therefore, we have to exploit the market. We can say not only profitability but also other issues need to be raised in here because the society need to be bankable the society need to be cashless the society need to grow up need to come to banks and put or save its money because of different motives we need to make this one we need to promote this kind of cases therefore two things need to be raised in here profitability is one term plus Resource mobilization is the greatest wing ever in this case. Everybody needs to come to bank so that it should save its money. Therefore, for example, when you come to Commercial Bank of Ethiopia, the service charges for digital banks, for example, for one who uses ATM money to withdraw a thousand per, pays only one per service charge. When we come to, when we come to analysis of the real cost of that service charge, it's little or it is uh, too much uh, less uh, little amount we can say or uh, less amount we can say in terms of the service it's given in terms of time in terms of quality using that machine need to be paid more but we need to attract those customers who uh, should use banking transactions or any kind of uh, transactions which need to be digital enough this is uh, what need to be uh, or even given from the government as an assignment, we can say. Government has given CV an assignment, making the society digital society, making the society bankable society, making the society cashless society. Such kind of assignments are given from the government because it is a state-owned uh, organization or institution. The mm -hmm. government wants the bank to uh, do something in terms of modernizing the society. This is one assignment. The second one is profitability. Without profitability, we cannot exist as a business. In order to have this one, 
One wing is resource mobilization. The second wing is resource allocation. By collecting amount of money from those who have excess, we need to distribute to those who have less. In order to do this one, we do have, for example, corporate strategy, then resource mobilization strategy, foreign currency strategy, marketing strategy, then sales strategy. From the marketing strategy part, I was discussing in some kind of part of that one. By having an information or an external, by doing an external market assessment in Waradas or federal government, whatever it is, and having from trade organizations, from business, from other uh, kind of organizations too, collecting data, it tries to promote its organization or its uh, product for attracting the customer. But in this case, the most important customer need not be forgotten. Super value is also given by taking some kind of uh, niche market activities. This is uh, what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, is, I know somebody Ketachu has raised their pizan, but just a moment because I think we are running out of time. Um, we've dealt a lot about the banks, and uh, I want to share a little experience from what is going on in uh, this country. One is that um, uh, the products in the banks have been made in such a way that it has taken up almost everyone. In fact, the percentage of people who are not bankable now is so small that it can be less than 5%. Because now, uh, most, of the, most of the people uh, operate their accounts from their mobile phones. And uh, mo mobile phones has a very wide use. Uh, a way of targeting and bringing up people who are not, for example, bankable, um, accounts have been introduced which don't charge, for example, ledger fees, those ones which are very little interest for stuff like that. So there are a lot of things going on in the banking sector, but I was looking forward to hearing with, uh, from somebody who deals with the goods. We have a chance in this group, anyone who may be in their own companies or in the companies they work for could be handling goods and services. Is there a way you can discriminate um, or rather segment or market on the basis of uh, the eight um, areas that we, we, we raised? If there is no one, um, I would like to just um, take this time to thank everyone for coming into this discussion. I would like to hear more voices as we move on. Uh, some people were a bit quiet today. I was looking forward to hearing from somebody like Solomon, Felicit, um, amongst others, who have been very active in the class, amongst others. Uh, Nat Nile, where did you go today? I didn't hear from you. Amongst everybody, I'd like to, because this, uh, this course, I'd like to make it a little bit more practical, things that we are associating with every day. Um, I would like you to go back again individually to look at the organizations that you guys work for. Um, Can I say something, or... Doctor, sorry? Yes, yes, Nathaniel, please. Yeah, just, you know, as per our uh, organization, maybe mm -hmm. uh, the same like a bank, uh, actually our, mm -hmm. we are also a service giving company, uh, actually mm -hmm. a little bit different, but we are air charter company. So, uh, mm -hmm. We are, you know, segmented. Uh, our customers like, you know, uh, exclusive market. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the, also the, the purpose of uh, segmentation is, you know, just not only to segment uh, the market, but also, you know, mm -hmm. any company cannot fulfill 100% uh, need of the customers. So maybe, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. once we uh, segment the market, Maybe you know we can add time to time, you know, to fulfill. But in any case, we cannot fulfill. Let's say, for example, if at this hour we divided by five places, like east, north, center, or something, and you know, even if you know mm -hmm. we can get four or three fruitful uh, market segmentation in the north, in the south, until then, you know, we cannot fulfill all these three or four uh, segments. Mm -hmm. But the purpose, mm -hmm. the purpose of segmentation is not only the, just for the purpose of segmentation. 
After that, maybe you know we can focus mm -hmm. to do that uh, business. In the case of national airways, uh, we do uh, a market exclusively. Uh, we divide it, and also our customers are uh, high-end customers because you know they should buy mm -hmm. this service you know as a charter, so a bit mm -hmm. you know, expensive. Mm -hmm. So we are you know looking for like individuals like by media segmentation, maybe it is an email or internet or web, and also uh, mining companies, those who are, you know, coming to us, you know, for charter purposes, and other international NGOs also come to us. So uh, the second segmentation is will be a uh, price segmentation. So we are, we can mm -hmm. use media segmentation and the price segmentation. Also, you know, sometimes we are doing, you know, from the promotion mixes, we do the direct marketing you know because you know we should go uh, each companies by knocking their door and you know we do a market mm -hmm. and we show them uh, our services and they are trying we are trying to catch them thank you